Poker Tour. The biggest games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. The WPT is a series of international high-stakes poker tournaments that can turn amateur players into millionaires and make professionals into superstars. With millions of dollars on the line, it's time for these six players to live the dream of fame, fortune, and the one thing money can't buy, a WPT title. Tonight on the World Poker Tour. WPT hits the beach for Poker in Paradise and the fun won't stop until one player walks away a WPT champion. So what are you waiting for? Shuffle up and deal. Hi everyone and welcome to the hottest stop of the WPT season the beautiful tropical islands of Turks and Caicos. I'm Mike Sexton. And I'm Vince Van Patten. And Mike, I don't know whether we're on the Turks or the Caicos. I'm a little <laughs> confused. However, I do know that this is the first time ever that the WPT has come to this beautiful chain of islands 500 miles off the coast of Miami to run right smack dab in the middle of a high-stakes poker game, all courtesy of the Players Club. Well, many of the biggest names in poker couldn't resist the allure of the sun, the sand, and the money that goes with the WPT title. And after four days of tournament poker in paradise, we are down to our final six players, a nice combination of amateurs and pros, including a WPT champion and the guy they call the king of poker here on Turks and Caicos. Vince, sunscreen and poker, it just doesn't get much better than no, this. that's right. We are seaside at Club Med in the Turks and Caicos. The sun is shining, the drinks are flowing, and the cards are in the air. Let's go watch them gamble. All right, the Andrews are 1,000, the blinds are 4 and 8. Action's going on to Alan Sass. He quickly folds. Around to the WPT champion, Nam Lee. Now I'm folding, and now the chip leader, Eric Casuale. He's got king three of hearts. He's also got more than twice as many chips as anybody else on the table. So he can be king B. He's acting like it right here. Raise it to 23,000. Riney goes out. Chris Smith, cash player, going out as well. Only one to beat is Trevor Ebert. He's got jack 10 off suit. And what a story it is about this guy, Vance. He was here on vacation, heard about the poker tournament, and entered it. Here he is at the final. Well, he's going to stick around for the flop. And here comes our first flop in the very first hand. And it's come a 6-3 off suit. Action's on Trevor. He caught nothing right there. But he's coming out with a bet of 27,000 with nothing. Wow. Eric got a piece of it. Pair of threes. Vance, he's just not buying that a guy flopped two aces here. He's going to think that the guy would check raise him if he had the top pair. And Eric Casualty is going to raise it right here with bottom pair. A well, $50,000 raise into Trevor. He's an inline skater from Canada. He's going to lay it down. So the former bartender from Montreal, Eric Casualty, takes down his tip right there. I came so close many times. I got 10th in Niagara Falls. I got 20th in Borgata and 22nd in Boxwood. It was all like tough, tough way to go. So from now, it's all about winning. I make my final table, but if I do anything but first, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. But Vance, what about how beautiful these islands are? What a place for a poker tournament. Oh, it has been fantastic. Turquoise water. Some of the most beautiful skin diving and snorkeling areas in the world, bar none, here at Turks and Caicos. And tonight, the winner's going to get close to a half a million dollars. Action's on the local. The king of poker here on Turks and Caicos, former cop, Randy Campbell. He looks down at Ace 5 offsuit. Going to raise it right up to 25000 under the gun. Yes, he does. Chris Smith out. Trevor Ebert not playing. Alan Sass going away. Over to Nam Lee, the WPT champion. Nam looks down at a queen three, opts to lay it down. So the only one to beat is Eric Cajule, the chip leader. And Eric has a 6-4 diamonds. He's also got a lot of chips. Does he so, want to speculate here? Well, he can well afford to make the call, so he does so. So two-way action between two guys, Vance, that look like they could play in the NFL. Yeah. Big stack against the short stack. Here's the flop. A flop comes 10-5-3 with two clubs. Eric flopped an open-end straight draw. He checks. But Riney, local businessman, picking up a pair of fives, and he's going to make a continuation bet of 35000 Yeah, he's got second pair with top kicker. So he bets it. Just to test the water here. And Eric is going to make the call with the open-end straight draw. Yeah, he's going nowhere. And here comes the turn card. 
King of Spade comes off. No help to either player. Eric quickly checking there. And Rainey behind him. Also going to check. We're going to the river. Well, Deuce uh, of Clubs comes off now. And it hits the chip leader. Eric, he hits it straight. He's studying there because there is a potential flush out there now. But still, you call on the flop with an open end straight draw and make it. You got to be feeling pretty good about your hand. Rainey looking over at him. Trying to get a read on him. And Eric is going to make a bet of 100000 here. He's going to put Riney to the test here. And I'm talking about to the test of about half his stack. Well, this could be devastating to the local ambassador of Turks and Caicos. The amateur player, although a very solid player. Well, he's going to try to figure out what he can beat here with two fives. The guy called him on the flop, so he had to have something, whether it was a straight draw, a flush draw, or a pair. A raise before the flop. He called a bet on the flop. Yes, he checked on the turn, but all of a sudden, possible straight and flush card comes out in the river. His opponent is firing 100,000 at the pot. Cool. Oh, he makes the wrong move right there. He's going to pay off an additional 100,000. Straight on the river. And that's with that pot. Riney Campbell is now on the severe short stack at this final table. And the chip leader, everything going his way. Eric Cajolet taking down this pot. Former bartender spiking drinks here early on. Right, Thank you. The king of poker here on Turks and Caicos just been knocked down to the pawn of poker in that pot. Nice. Thanks. Riney Campbell in dire straits right now to stay alive in this tournament on the severe short stack. You know, he's a former cop here on the island, and he said he learned how to play poker while he was on the job. Oh, Vance, you got to love it. Cops play poker here. What a place <laughs> this is. Yes, it is. All right, back to the action. The chip leader finally folding a hand. And it's back on Riney Campbell. This time, he has a jack eight of hearts. Very short stack. He's getting chips out. And he's going to raise it, Vance. Makes it 17,000 to go here. Cash player Chris Smith going away. Trevor now looking down at an ace five on the button. No, he folds. Round of the small blind, Alan Sass. Alan's a poker pro out of Las Vegas. He lays his hand down. Only one to beat now is Nam Lee in the big blind. He's got a 10-4. Vance, he doesn't have much of a hand, but... He knows it's only going to cost him 9,000 more to make this call. There's 35,000 in the pot. How uh, good a pot odds as you're going to get. Well, you're right. A small raise there by Riney Campbell, and that is going to induce this call. Nam Lee has called. We're going to see a flop. The two short stacks going at it here. Watch it. A flop comes 10, 9, deuce. And now has checked blind, and Riney Campbell with the open in his straight draw. He has pushed all his chips in. Got 60,000 left. He sails it to the center. Now, now I'm shaking his head. How much is that? I don't know why. You'd think he'd be happy with this flop. He's flop top pair here. Six. I think he'd quickly make this call. He does make yes, the call. He does. And a good call by Nam Lee as the cards lie. He's about a two to one favorite to win this pot and eliminate the local poker hero. The former cop standing up. The impending doom two cards away. No matter what, I have to play it that way. Sit, you're not going anywhere. Sit. You're, you're standing up like you're expecting to leave. Sit. I was expected to leave. Riney Campbell's looking for a queen or a seven to make a straight. A jack gives him the lead. As the crowd in the adjacent room rooting for their man. He needs some help to stay alive in this tournament. Luck of the island, will he get it? Oh, he's done it, man. Oh, oh. Queen of Hearts right on the turn. <laughs> And he is celebrating. This hand is over. There's no card now. Lee can catch to win this pot now. As Riney makes a straight on the turn. And look at this. Riney <laughs> improves again. He now makes a flush on the river. Of course he does. He sits back down as he doubles up. Well, he's the one that promoted the WPT event here at the Turks and Caicos. The least we could do is have him stick around. The only thing more beautiful than this speech is winning the WPT championship. Who's going to take it down? Find out as we continue right after this. We play because poker's not a scratch-off ticket, a half-court jumper, or a knock on wood. It's no game of luck, poker. It's a game of patience and well-timed aggression. We know when we play, a little luck helps. 
But luck can't explain why final tables have so many familiar faces. We play at FullTillPoker.com. Winning my second title would be a, a big deal because there's not many two-time WPT champions out there. So to be in that group would be awesome. Welcome back to the beautiful Turks and Caicos Poker Classic here on the islands. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. Four guys in their 20s, two in their 30s, fighting it out for nearly a half million dollar first place prize. Our current chip leader, Canadian Poker Pro Eric Cajolet. He's got over 1.3 million in second place. Las Vegas Pro Alan Sass. And on the short stack right now, WPT champion Nam Lee with 118,000. Oh, sorry. Lines are going up to five and 10,000. It's on Alan Sass from Vegas. And he has picked up a pair of kings. What a hand. Going to make a raise going up to 27,000 to go. That's the first hand he's played at this final table. Nam Lee going out. Round to the chip leader now. Eric Cajolet looks at Jack Nine of Hearts. Says his favorite hand is Jack Ten suited. Here he's going to play the Jack Nine suited. He makes the call. Well, that's close enough. And now Riney Campbell, who can't stay out of many pots with an ace seven of diamonds. Wow, well, Vince. A lot of money out there right now. 70,000. So he's going to call 17,000 more, and why not? Three-way action here. Here comes the flop. Oh, it's come Jack, 9-8. Eric Cajolet has taken the lead with a top two pair. Top two pair. What a flop now. He has checked it. Riney with an inside straight draw with the seven. He has checked. Into the man with the kings, Alan Sass from Vegas. And he's coming out with a bet. Looks like 47,000. Well, he's got the over pair. But even when you have two kings in this situation, when you get called by two players and all those middle cards come out there in a possible straight, you're always a little nervous. Let's see how Eric's going to play these top two pair. Eventually, he is going to raise it. And a healthy raise makes it 160,000. Riney quickly folding back into Alan Sass. He doesn't like the raise. You know that. On the other hand, he's got the over pair. He's wondering, would this guy be making this move with something like a Jack-10? Could he possibly have an ace-jack where my two kings are the best hand? He doesn't lay this hand down, though, Vince. Could be laying out on the beach very shortly in sixth place. To not be cocky, it's counterintuitive to how poker players think. There's so much luck involved. I'd rather go the other strategy where I'd, you know, be humble and try and learn from everybody and just, you know, try and have results. He has been cold decked after the flop with this one. Could he possibly lay down kings here, Vince? Small in. Oh, and he's going over the top all in. Eric says, how much have you got there? Well, it's close to a half a million dollars in total. Eric can well afford to make this call. Can't imagine he could lay down the top two pair here, Vince. Well, this is semi-automatic, you would think. But Eric is going to wait a little bit and consider other things. Now, the funny thing is that the longer Eric takes with his decision, Alan's starting to think his kings are good. I hate to disappoint him here. I call it. Eric has made the call, oh. and as the cards lie, he's about a 70% favorite to win this pot. Right. They turn up the cards, and Alan a little stunned there. Well, Vince, that thud you heard was Alan's heart hitting the floor. He knows he was in second chip position here. He's now clashing with a chip leader. He's a major underdog to stay alive in this tournament. Alan Sass from Vegas could be our first casualty. We will see. Everything's gone Eric Cajolet's way so far. If he wins this pot, which is over a million dollars, he'll be the massive chip leader. So far, so good for him. Yep. The four diamonds comes on the turn. We are down to the river as the cards lie. Eric nearly a four to one favorite to win this pot. He's just got to dodge a king, an eight, or a four. Alan's staying very cool there. One of those three cards is what Alan Sass has to catch to stay alive in this tournament. Let's see if he can do it. With one card to come, he needs a suck out. Can he get it? <laughs> and he gets it. He catches the eight on the river to double up against the chip leader. And Eric Cajolet jumps out of a seat and goes and looks out at the beach for a moment stunned by that river card and look at alan says unemotional mr poker right there he was on the verge of being eliminated in sixth place and now after catching that river card he's the chip leader at this final table i got lucky 
seriously denting a chip leader right there. Alan Sass hitting that card. He's got to be happy. Complete reversal of fortune. Now he has about $1.1 million. We've seen it so many times on the World Poker Tour. One moment you're on the brink of elimination. The next moment, after the card flips off, you're the chip leader. All right. Actually, on the cash player from Vegas, Chris Smith. Been very patient. This time he folds a 6-5. Trevor going out. And now it's on to Alan Sass, who has an A7. Well, the newfound chip leader. Reaching for raising chips. And indeed he is. Going to make it 27,000 to go. Right behind him, Nam Lee on the short stack with King Queen goes all in. Figures he won't pick up many hands, maybe better than this, before he gets down to virtually nothing. Eric Casale has gone out, but now Riney Campbell, he's got a big hand, ace king, big slick. Boy, does he ever, Vince. Ooh. He's not going to hesitate too long. Well, he's going all in also. Wow. So both these short stacks have moved all in on the chip leader, Alan Sass. He goes out. We got two jacks. And we've got a showdown here. Well, Nam says, I hope you got two jacks. Unfortunately for him, his opponent's got an ace king. I, I saw the king die just now. He doubled up against Nam to stay alive in this tournament when he made it straight earlier. Nam Lee, who's seeking his second WPT title tonight, up against it right here, Vance. The 27 year old needs some luck. Here's the flop, gets none. Flop comes seven, six, five. He could back into a diamond flush to win the pot. He needs a queen to take the lead. Two more straight cards on the board. They would split the pot if a straight came out. But right now, Namli. He's been the only one to knock out sixth place before. Up against it, and he knows it. Oh, yes, he is. The WPT winner needs some suck out cards, and it's a king of diamonds. That's a pretty good card for him. He's got a diamond there. Riney gives it to Fish, but actually it gives more outs to Namli. It's a diamond will now win the pot for him. I'm not worried. He also has a pair of kings. He needs a queen or a diamond on the river to stay alive in this tournament. Seven, seven Here comes the river card. Seven of hearts. Yes! And it's over. Four clubs comes off. So there you go. WPT champion Nam Lee is going to go out in sixth place. He's going to pick up $30,000 for the effort. Nam Lee, the first one to drown here at Turks and Caicos. Five players remain here at this tropical resort. Stay tuned. We're coming back for more action on the WPT. Welcome back to Turks and Caicos, where we're going to have a new WPT champion as the only former WPT champion at this final table was eliminated in sixth place. That was Nam Lee. And right now, Alan Sass from Vegas, a professional for only three years, the chip leader with close to $1.1 million. Back down to the table, Trevor's out, Alan out. The former chip leader from Montreal, Eric Cajoulet with a jack deuce of hearts. Won't play that. Now, that was a wise move because in the small blind, oh. Riney Campbell has picked up the big dukes, the two aces. On the islands, they call them the top coconuts. Pair of aces. He's raised it. Well, he's raised it the minimum raise allowed. Blinds are five and 10,000. He's made it 20,000 to go. Now, Chris Smith is stuck around. He's got king seven, induced by that small raise. Here comes the flop. Eight, seven, three. So Chris has caught a piece of that. Riney leads out and bets the two aces, but... Chris has second pair here. He's going to make the call. $25,000 bet. Nice pot developing a jack of spades on the turn. So potential straight and potential flush on the board here. Rainey with a quick bet, though, with no spade. Looks like 60000 And he's got the best hand with the two aces. Now Chris has picked up a king high flush draw as well as his pair of sevens. His opponent raised before the flop, the minimum raise. That always scares you. Got a little stare down contest here. I'll show you. The sickest hand ever. All right, show me. A little talk, and boy, he's talked him out of calling. Now, this one I want to see. I have uh, 15 ounces to win this hand. I got the king of spades and pair of sevens. Good, good bet on the turn. Now, and look at this a three of spades. Chris would have hit wow. lightning right there. He would have made the flush to win this pot, Vance. He would have cracked the two aces, but give Riney credit for bleeding out on the turn there and continuing to fire. Had he not done so, he would have lost that pot. So the king of poker of Turks and Caicos, Riney Campbell moving into third chip position after taking down that pot. All right, back to the table. Riney has got a king, 10 of clubs. He's just going to call. Around to Alan Sass in a small blind. It cost him a half a bet to make the call here. He does so. Well, there's another inducement. Sticking around because it doesn't cost much. 
Now it's Eric Cajolet, who has the same hand, the big blind, as Chris <laughs> just had, yeah. the King 7 offsuit. But he gets to see a free flop, doesn't have to put any more money in there. All right, so we have three-way action. Here's the flop. Top two pair for Riney Campbell, wow. kings and tens. Allen checks bottom pair. Eric Cajolet has flopped top pair himself and checked. And Riney is now going to make a $20,000 bet with his two pair. Allen lays down the bottom pair. And Vance, here's part of the problem of being in the big blind. You hit the top pair. What do you do here? He's making the call. So Eric Cajolet in dire straits. And when the four hearts pops up on the turn, he is now drawing completely dead. No card he can catch to win this pot. Again, he checks. And again, Riney bets, this time 65000 Now, let's not forget, Riney did not raise before the flop. And that's what the professional Eric is thinking right now. This guy probably doesn't have a king. Well, we know he's a lot better. All the money he's putting in the pot is going down the drain. He has no card he can win this pot with. It is dead money right here, but he is stuck in this hand. River card coming up. Two diamonds back on Eric. It's a very bad card for Eric because it's no apparent help to anybody. And again, Eric checks. And this time, Rhino's bet 100000 oh. with the top two pair. But Rhino just jamming this pot, which sometimes looks like you're trying to steal. Eric's considering that. He's saying, well, I'm already invested. It's a big pot. When you continue to check and call, you get yourself in these quagmires where you're at a guess as to what to do. This would be a phenomenal laydown by Eric Cajolet if he can make it. Two pairs. He makes the call, and Ronnie quickly bangs the table, knowing the kings and tens are the best hand here. Oh, and the island man punches the table is more like it. Well, he bet that hand beautifully, Vince. Got paid off on every street. And Eric, looking like death warmed over, is saying, you were just a couple cards away from complete elimination. How did you get back into this race? Well, he's won back-to-back -back pots. That's how, Vance. The local owner roll right now, Riney Campbell, is doing it here. It's like the Cinderella Man story. It's unbelievable that I'm still in the tournament. And he's a very, very nice guy. He's very unpredictable. I'm not afraid of the chip leader. He definitely has has some skills, but he's swimming uphill. Oh. But he's the one most likely to make a, a key mistake. I let you get yeah. I've played now with Mike Mattisau. I've played with Mark Safe. I've played with David Williams. So far, all the poker pros that I've met, I actually enjoy playing with. I mean, Mike Mattisau, he's the loudest guy in the game. But you sit next to Mike Mattisau at the table, and if he likes you, it is the best fun you can have. I know for a fact right now I'm not the best poker player in the world. Wait till after this tournament. Then you can ask me that question. To all my friends and family and everybody who has basically supported me in making this dream a reality. And I think there would be no better victory fitting for the island but for me to win this tournament. The Rhino on a little roll right now, Vance. No doubt about that. Back to the table. It's going to be on Alan Badsass. Alan looks down at Jack Eight of Clubs. He's the chip leader. He's going to make a position raise here, 27,000. Into the small blind, Eric, who's been taking his hits as of late. He's got a 9-4. He is reaching for raising chips here. Indeed, he's going to come over the top. Makes it 75,000 to go. Thinks he can push the table around, and now it's on Rhiney. The Rhino, 4-3, he goes out. So back on the original razor with the button. Alan Sass. You know, you got to say this is a very solid read by Eric. He's saying this guy has the button. He's got chips. He's just trying to muscle those around. Even though I have nothing, I think you have worse. Well, these are the two chip leaders going at it here. Let's see what Alan's going to do with the jack eight of clubs. He's reaching for chips. They're not calling chips. Those are raisin chips, folks. Right. He has come right back over the top. 100,000 more. Nicely done. He's saying this party's not over yet. I don't believe you. You may not believe me, but here you go. Here's a raise in your face. Well, <laughs> Alan recognized the fact that this guy just lost the last pot. Not a happy camper right now. Took a bad beat earlier in a huge pot against him. Now, what can Eric Casually be thinking about? He's got a 9-4 offsuit here. He took a stab at the pot. Actually made a good move at it. His opponent just had a jack high. 
But now he's been re-raised 100,000 more. There is. Oh, man. He says raise. This is unbelievable. It can't be. It's unbelievable. <laughs> he puts out the 100,000 for the call. Let's see how much more he's going to put in this pot. Folks, this is incredible. He just won't give this up. For a guy to make a fourth raise here against the chip leader with a 9-4 offsuit is unbelievable. Talk about Uncle Tilty. He is dancing on Eric's shoulder here. He is raising an additional $180,000 to go. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Well, you're right, Vince. This is incredible poker you're witnessing. His opponent just has a jack high, but how can he know it? Putting in a huge amount of money on the assumption the other guy is weak. And both these guys have made that same play. And finally, Alan, Bad Sass has to lay down the hand. And I'll tell you something. Make friends with Uncle Tilty. He can make your money sometimes. And Vince, I'm confused myself. I don't know if it was total tilt or if indeed he picked up something on Alan Sass and just says, I know this guy's got nothing. I'm re-raising him right back. And if ever a guy earned a pot on the World Poker Tour, it was Eric right there. For everything you need to know about this game we love, log on to WPT on GSN.com. We are back in one of the most beautiful islands in the world, the Turks and Caicos. For the Turks and Caicos Poker Classic, our first one here on the World Poker Tour, we have five players going after a WPT title and close to a half a million dollars. Our current chip leader is Eric Cajolet. And Vince, I got to tell you, he deserves a chip lead after making a fourth raise in that last pot with a 9-4 offsuit. It is truly awesome poker we are watching here. Let's go over to the table. We're under the small blind now. Randy Campbell looks down at Kojak. He's got King Jack of Diamonds. He's going to raise it up. Not a big raise, just 11,000. Into Chris Smith, who has a Jack 8. There's 36,000 in the pot, so getting well over 3 to 1 odds on his money. He's going to make the call. Chris Smith not looking at the flop, staring at Riney. Oh. And he sees Riney reaching for chips as he flops top pair. With a huge kicker, but of course, Chris right next to him, flopping two pair, Jackson eights. Randy has checked the top pair on the flop here. Chris tries not to smile, wants to conceal the strength of his hand, but Chris is going to make a bet here at 14,000. And then Riney coming right over the top with a $46,000 raise, it looks like. Well, Riney has check raised here. Chris Smith. Well, here's the problem he has. There's a possible straight out there. There's two hearts out there. You wouldn't want to just call in this case and something like the seven hearts pop off or now you're the total guess as your opponent's got it or not. He's thinking about does he push now or not. Chris Smith takes vacations here to Turks and Caicos. When he comes, they set up a nice poker game. Ronnie always plays in it, so these guys know each other's game events. Let's see who knows each other best in this pot. It's not as no good. You got a big jack, kid? Is that what you're saying? You got a jack with a real kicker? Well, he's got him pegged perfectly. If you got a jack with a real kicker, and Ronnie sort of smiled when he said that. Yeah. And then the funny thing is, he's asking the question like, if you have that, you've got me beat, sir. He's sucking him in. I'm all in. Call. Chris going all in, and a quick call by Ronnie. Well, Chris has reeled him in perfectly here, Vince. He is a dominating favorite to double up right here. He has flopped two pair. His opponent's got top pair is all he's got. So yeah, he got two picks. right now, Riney is going to have to catch a king or a nine to take the lead here. Chris, a 70 percent favorite to win this pot. Nice hand, Chris. Thank you, sir. Here we go with the turn card. The five of spade comes off. So right now, Ronnie's going to have to catch a king or a nine. Only Ronnie can eliminate him. I get a good turn chart. No queen, no ace, right? So he didn't pick up three outs. Chris Smith well out front right now. Well over a four to one favorite to win this pot. Six of clubs comes on the river. Nice hand, Chris. Thank you, sir. So Chris Smith, the cash game player out of Las Vegas, is going to double up here off the nice local. Two pairs. Wow. Well, Ronnie says nice hand to him. Two pair, what can I do about that? I can tell you what you can do. You can count your money out and pass it over to Chris. Two catches, two pairs. That sucks. Chris Smith just stacking up more chips. I just want to win the money. 
That's the cash game player's attitude. I'm figuring out what's the way to cash the, the most. I can't buy a house or put kids through college with a bracelet. But the money, the money pays for that. So Ronnie Campbell, the local, taking a big blow right there. Once again, he's in last place. He's looking a little dejected. This guy loves to play poker. The ambassador of Turks and Caicos, a businessman, amateur player. Action's on, Rhino. Looks down to the 10-9 offsuit here. He's going to raise it, but not the minimum this time. This time it's 35000 Chris quickly folding, as does Trevor. Now Alan Sass not going to play, so around the horn to Eric. No, Eric Cajolet looks down to Queen Jack offsuit here. He's got 10000 in the pot. Cost him 25000 more to make the call. He's the chip leader right now. If you're going to call, do you want to just set him all in right here or just see a flop first? The former bartender pondering this decision. He's going to make the call with the queen jack. He starts to say all in. Rhino with the 10-9. Oh, and the flop comes. Oh. Queen jack, three. Eric has flopped the top two pair. All in. Call. He's checked. Rhino's moved in with the open end straight draw. Quickly called by Eric. So, Rhino Campbell... Up against it right here. His opponent's got the top two pair. He's got an open end straight throw. You with this one? Uh, it's not the hand I want to see. I would, I would prefer to see his queen there. We saw Ronnie Campbell stay uh, alive he when he flopped so the open end straight draw earlier at this final table. When Nam Lee flopped top pair, he made the straight there. Let's see if he can do it here. It ain't over yet, kid. Most likely he's going to have to make a straight to stay alive here. Looking for an eight or a king. Uh, what is he with eight outs twice? Okay, let's see the turn. Six of diamonds Ooh, on the turn. That's not good. So we are down right. to the river card. Eric Cajolet just has to dodge a king or an eight to take Rhino out of this tournament. Can the island man get lucky once again? He's going to need it. Here's the river. Yes! Oh, he's done it, man. <laughs> the eight pops off on the river. He has made the straight. For the second time, he's been all in. He's caught a straight to stay alive. And for the second time, Eric Cajole has swapped two pair and gotten a horrible beat on the river by an opponent. Keep the dream alive. Unbelievable. Well, you talk about a home court advantage in terms of drawing out. <laughs> Ronnie Campbell doing it here. Wow. The poker action is just heating up, so stay cool and stay tuned as we continue from Turks and Caicos right after this. Welcome back to Grace Bay and the island of Provo for the WPT Turks and Caicos Poker Classic. Now, today's winner will take home a suitcase full of cash and the coveted WPT title. Let's waste no time and get back to the game with Mike and Vince. Eric Cajolet from Montreal is a chip leader with over $1 million. Anties and blinds are going up. We're now going to play with a $2,000 ante. Blinds are six and 12000 Alan Sass from Vegas. He folds a queen 10. Eric Cajolet quickly folding his hand. Now around to Ronnie Campbell. Ronnie looks down at an ace high on the button. And he's in position. And he's just going to limp in, it appears. Just makes the call out of the button. Chris Smith folding his hand, and now uh, send me home. Trevor oh, Abers, he's got big slick ace king, putting all his chips in. What are you doing? Well, you can't blame him for going all in here, that's for sure. Advance, he said, send me home. And it doesn't mean that because he's here on vacation. Heard about a tournament, played the poker tournaments at the final table. He's just going to go back to the beach if he gets knocked out. It's going to cost Ryan, he's 77 grand. Call. Ryan, he has called. He flips up his cards. And right now, Trevor. The inline skater. Someday you're going to get unlucky. He's dominating over Riney Campbell. Well, well out front. Well over a four to one favorite to win this pot. Good luck. Someday you're going to get unlucky. Ace King versus Ace Three. Trevor about a 70% favorite to win this pot with the Ace King. Can Riney Campbell get lucky yet again? Trevor, this flop is not going to be good for you. Okay, here comes the first three on the flop, and they both hit aces. But Riney with kicker problems. And with that pot, Trevor jumps up to well over an 80% favorite to win this pot. Riney going to have to catch a three to win the pot. He could also catch a running 5-6 to make a straight, but that doesn't happen as a 10 of spade comes on the turn. So we are down to the river card. Riney Campbell must catch a three on the river to win this pot. 
Well, he was close. Our four comes yeah. off. Uh, you can't win them all. Trevor taking down his first nice pot of the evening. He's been very patient so far. Finally, it pays off. I'm just a guy from Vancouver. I play lots of poker out there, and I'm new to the World Poker Tour for sure. Why do I like it? It gets my heart going. It's a thrill. I can't beat this. And so back home, we go play poker and walk outside and you're in the rain. I'm out here on a white sandy beach, and it's awesome. He's living the dream right now. Well, Trevor going to double up here. Randy Campbell once again now finds himself on the short stack, Vince. He's been there consistently at this final table so far. So nobody wants to go home here from Turks and Caicos, the land of the beach ball, the bikini, and the baby oil. Trevor Hebert surviving an all-in battle there to stay alive. Action back on Chris Smith. Chris, a very tight, solid player. Looks down at a junky little 4-3 offsuit. Won't play that. Trevor lays down a 7-6. Alan Sass going away. And now Eric Cajolet in the small blind has an ace-3. Well, it's the battle of the blinds here. Eric is going to raise it. Makes it 41,000 to go. Come all in. Oh, the king of poker on Turks and Caicos has picked up two kings. And he says all I in with it. it. Got the King Kongs. And Eric wants to know exactly how much it's going to cost him. He flopped the top two pair against the open end of straight draw the last time he had Ronnie all in. He got beat. So right now, you know he's eyeing those chips because he's got to feel like they belong to him a little bit, Vince. A former bartender with a huge decision right now. There's not quite a quarter of a million dollars in the pot. Going to cost him another 140000 to make this call. So he's not getting two to one odds on his money. But still, this guy's been a thorn in his side. He'd like to get rid of him. He's got the chips. He can afford to make the call. Will he gamble here? Well, he's doing it, Vince. He has made the call. Yeah, out of the boys. Now Rhino says, say hi to the boys. He turns up the two kings. <laughs> Eric winces as he sees that. Even with that big duke that Rhino has. Because he's got an ace in his hand, he's just slightly worse than a two to one underdog to win this pot. So it's not as bad as it looks. Oh. Eric is due, man. He hasn't hit a hand all day. As the players are saying at the table, Eric, you're due for a little luck here. He's taken two horrendous beats on the river to lose a couple pots at this final table. Maybe he can get lucky this time. Let's take a look at our flop. Not there, he's not. Well, he's caught bottom pair. It's come queen, six, three. So now he can win the pot with an ace or a three. He says, look, this guy's outdrawn me already at this final table. Why can't I outdraw him one time? Well, eight of hearts comes on the turn. So we are down to the river card. Eric Cajolet must catch an ace or a three to eliminate Ronnie Campbell from this tournament. Come on, not yet. Will the Island Man do it? Yes, yes he does. Ronnie Campbell's hand is pair king. He's gonna hold up. Well, Jack of spades on the river. Well, we can see the overflow crowd out there rooting Ronnie on. He's the local, he's the guy they're pulling for. Vince are trying to keep the money on the island here. And complete pain and loathing for Eric, who keeps taking his hit from the man on the left. Put away the beach ball because this thing is getting personal. Stay tuned. A great battle is happening here at the Turks and Caicos, and we're coming right back. The Turks and Caicos is a beautiful island way out there in the middle of nowhere. The water here is beautiful. It's the clearest water anywhere. The sand is white sandy beaches. It's a great place to be. The Players Club is the biggest poker room in the Turks and Caicos Islands. You have to go and see it. There's a great atmosphere. The feeling is good. There's nobody that I've seen get up from the table and not within five minutes be smiling again. When you get hot at a poker tournament, you need to cool off. We have the best ocean in the world to jump right in. Welcome back to paradise. The Turks and Caicos Poker Classic continues. We are playing five-handed here this afternoon. And right now, Eric Cajolet, the former bartender from Montreal, out in front with close to a million dollars. Eric, a pro out of Canada. Alan Sass in second place. He's been a pro for a couple years, now living in Las Vegas, Nevada. The short stack right now is the other Canadian at this table, Trevor Hebert. We're around to the Battle of the Blinds. Alan Sass looks down at a 6-5 offsuit. He's going to call out of the small blind. Eric Cajolet with the King 4 offsuit says, give us a flop. So the two chip leaders going at it. And these two have had some history already at this final table. 
Well, here's the flop, a six, the reduce. It gives Alan Sass top pair of sixes plus an inside straight draw, and he's coming out to bet it. 17,000, but Eric with the inside straight draw is going nowhere. He's made the call. He's just gambling here with the gut shot draw. Hoping to get lucky. Eric looking to catch a five to make a straight. Would give Allen the top two pair, of course. The king would give him the lead as well. And here comes the turn card. Eight of diamonds on the turn. Helps neither player. Allen slowing down. He checks it. A little surprised he'd check that hand, but he did. It looks like he knows what he's doing because his opponent is reaching for chips. Eric Casually is going to try to pick up this pot right here by betting 40000 With just an inside straight draw and a little position. Now, Allen trying to assess the situation. He thought he flopped the best hand with two sixes. It's hard to believe his opponent would catch an eight. That would help him in this hand. Allen Sass going to get stubborn. He does not go away. He calls. So off to the river we go. Seven of clubs comes off. Right back on Allen. Well, he's going to check his two sixes. And the only way Eric Cajolet could win this pot is to bluff at it, Vince. He only has king high, remember. Let's see if he'll pull the trigger and fire. Well, he does make a bet. It's an $80,000 bet. So whatever happens, give him credit for having the heart to bet here in this situation to try to win the pot. Now, the question is, will Allen lay his hand down? These are the two guys that bluffed each other in that one hand just incredibly back and forth. These guys both have big poker games in them. He's going to make the call, and a good call it is. Alan Sass going to win this pot with two sixes. What a nice call by Alan Sass right there. So the personal vendetta between these two guys this round going to Alan Sass. That is right. Alan Sass showing a lot of poker class right there. Taking down that pot. Only been playing poker for three and a half years. Going after a big title here today at the Turks and Caicos. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more exciting action in just a few moments. The next stop on the World Poker Tour is your home. Come play with us at WPT on GSN.com. All right, we are back at the Turks and Caicos Poker Classic in the Caribbean. I'm Vince Van Patten with Mike Sexton. Five players remain. The one wants to go home. Well, Vince, I'll tell you, we've got five lions at the table. There's no limping gazelles for somebody to eat up and take out of here. These guys are just fighting it out to the finish to see who's king of the jungle. Let's get back to the table and see who that's going to be. All right, back to this hand. Trevor Ebert folding with an ace, and now Alan Sass with a 9-6 of diamonds is going to raise. I'm very surprised. Trevor wouldn't raise on a short stack with an ace high in that situation, but he didn't. Allen has raised it. Eric goes out. But Riney Campbell with the jack nine in the big blind is going to make this call. Well, he's going to defend, as we say, with the jack nine offsuit here. And the flop comes queen, queen, deuce. No help to either player. Now, Riney quickly checking. Action on Allen. Will he do the continuation? Wow. No, he doesn't. He checks as well. Very surprised he would check, Vince. Turn card four are diamonds. That gives four flush to Alan Sass. Riney, of course, has nothing, but he's going to bluff at it with a jack eye here. Ironically, he's got the best hand. He bets 55000 Allen, however, has made a flush draw on the turn. Let's see if he wants to gamble here. Indeed, he does. He's going to make the call here. So off to the river we go. Riney, ironically, out in front with a jack eye. And a jack comes on the river. Riney has now made queens and jacks. He checks. Allen has done everything backwards so far in his hand. Let's see if he'll continue doing that. And yes, he's got a bet. 60,000. Oh, jacks. So you did river it. And Riney quickly calls him. He's going to win this pot with two jacks. Yes. And there was a case where Alan Sass was marching with two left feet throughout that pot. He didn't make the continuation bet on the flop. He called with a first throw on the turn, bluffed at the river, lost that pot. So the Rhino putting the horn in Alan Sass right there. That is right. The Rhino, Riney Campbell, continuing to do damage. This is my moment in the sunshine, Alan. And the blinds are going up to eight and 16,000. All these guys trying to capture the nearly half million dollar first place prize and a coveted WPT title. It's going to be on the hometown favorite, Riney Campbell, the Rhino. Well, he's the island Kojak, and he picks up Kojak. He limps in and makes a call. Into Chris Smith with a pair of nines just calling. 
Wow. Look at this, Trevor well, Hebert right? with king five of hearts says all in. Well, Trevor's on the short stack trying to make something happen, but Allen quickly folding with a couple guys so limping in in front of him. Surprised he would make his move at this time. And now Eric says, how much? Because he's got big it, slick. Get 200,000. And he's going to raise it. Well, he's going to make it a couple hundred thousand to go. Ryan Campbell wow. going out. I was trapping with this hand, Alan. This is so sick. You were trapping. I was setting a trap. And now I got a muck. Well, Chris throwing away two nines as well here. And we got a showdown between the two Canadians. Ace King up against King Five. Nice hand, Eric. Thank you. Eric dominating his opponent right now with Ace King. He's up against King Five, but. He's seen this trick before at this final table. He's not going to breathe easy until it's completely over with and the guy's gone. Trevor Hebert, 27 years old, out of Vancouver, Canada. Teaches skating to grade school kids. Came here on a vacation and took a shot at this tournament. Bye-bye, Trevor. Bye-bye. He is being dominated. Here comes the flop. Can he get lucky? Not right there. It's a queen, eight, seven on the flop. Well, there's one hard out there. So right now, Trevor's going to need a five to take the lead. Two running cars to make a flush or two running cars to make a straight. Otherwise, what about the ace of spades, guys? He'll be out of here in fifth place. Here comes fourth street. Ace of spades, here it comes. And that's going to help, Trevor. It's the jack of hearts. You see Eric Cajolet wins because he now knows his opponent can catch a heart or a five to win this pot. So many bad things have happened to him on the river. He hates to even look at this river card, I'm sure. His opponent looking for a five or a heart to stay alive in this tournament. Could it happen again? Here comes the river card. It's a ten of spades, and that's going to do it for Trevor Hebert. The guy who came here on a vacation is heading back to the beach right now. Trevor Hebert, $50,000 richer. Going to skate out of here with a very respectable fifth place. Four players remain at the Turks and Caicos Poker Classic. Stay tuned. We'll come back with more action in just a few moments. the tropics for the first ever WPT Turks and Caicos Poker Classic. Hey guys, I'm Layla Kaylee and here's the Poker Beach report so far. In this island paradise, WPT champ Nam Lee began with a dream of a second title yes! that was soon washed out by the pride of Turks and Caicos. A former beat cop who kept beating the odds by catching Lucky again and again. Yes! Next, a Canadian inline skater's title shot skidded to an end. It's a game right side. And now only four players remain. A conservative cash game pro, a rising young star, the hard luck chip leader, and the former island car. All looking to outlast the competition and make this tropical hotspot a true paradise by going home at WPT champion. Three professionals up against the hometown favorite, Riney Campbell. We're going after close to a half a million dollars here tonight. And right now, the man from Montreal, the former bartender, Eric Cajoulet, he is out in front with $1.1 million. Alan Sass with the button with an ace, eight of spades. Well, Alan going to limp in with the ace, eight of spades. Doesn't raise here on the button. Eric Cajolet, our chip leader, looks down at a 10-deuce offsuit here. That's the old Doyle Brunson hand. Man, it's going to cost him a half a bet oh. to make a call. Eight more thousand. He's going to do it. He's got the chips to do it, so he is going to gamble. And Ryanie Campbell in the big blind with an ace three. Not going to raise, so we're going to see a three-handed flop, and there it comes. Five, four, three, a spade. Allen has flopped an ace high flush. Eric Cajolet, however, flopped an open-end straight flush draw. He checks. And Riney is going to bet bottom pair here. He's got two threes. He bets 25000 Into Alan Sass. Show tunes going oh. off of this man's head right now. Well, he just okie dokie calls with the ace high flush. Eric Cajolet calls as well with the open end straight flush draw. I don't understand this. Coming to the turn. Ace of hearts on the turn. Eric Cajolet has made a wheel, a five high straight. Riney Campbell has made top and bottom pair. Eric quickly checks. Riney with top two pair. Now he is going to bet. Looks like $100,000. Well, now if you're now in Sass's position, what do you do here? You've got the ace high flush. Do you want to just slow call here and take a chance well, that your hand won't get outdrawn? Or do you want to take the money right now and make a pay for it? He's just making the call. Of a hundred thousand, and Eric Cajolet is going all in Four. with his straight. Oh. Ronnie folds, and Allen obviously quickly calls him with the A side flush. 
And Eric Cajolet uh, is sick about this hand. Uh, just a nice just call by Alan Sass. Sucking his man in. And he's getting all the action he wanted. What a great place he is in right now. Well, it's not over. Eric spades. has one out of six of spade. Would give him a straight flush. That is the only card in the deck he can win this pot with. Here comes the river card. Can he get the miracle? It's a six, but it's not the spade. Six of diamonds comes off. Alan Sass played that hand. Calm, cool, that and collected. Is he is doubling up here with the ace high flush. Well, cheap flops. That has been the tune tonight. Oh, really? Guys getting in with the cheap flop. A couple times it has hurt players. It was set up so beautifully by Allen. Just calling the 100,000. That was just brilliantly done. He didn't push hard. He set up the trap, dug the hole, put the branches and twigs over it, waited for the sucker to fall in. It was Eric. Well, Vance, if there's a volcano on these islands, it might be under the hat of Eric Cajolet right now because once again, Alan Sass kicks Eric Sass on that hand. <laughs> No, you're right. Eric getting himself in a lot of trouble, and he is steaming once again. And the chip leader now, once again, Alan Sass. Action's on him. He, he's got a 9-7 this time. He won't play that. And now Eric Cajolet from Montreal looks down at the big ace queen. 45. He's going to move it up to 45,000 to go. I'm all in. But just like that, Chris Smith says all in. He's just got king six of hearts, and he's making a move here. Well, Vince, Chris has recognized that every time Eric has lost a pot today, he seemingly raised the next pot many times with nothing. This time, indeed, he does have a hand. Well, the interesting thing is Chris has the perception of very, very tight solid. I mean, he hasn't played many hands tonight. He's saying, I don't believe he's that strong. I can steal this pot now, but he could be very wrong. I call. Eric's made the good call. Well, it is a good call by Eric. He's out in front here. Chris Smith has been patient all day long, Vince. All of a sudden goes all in with the King Six here. Eric Cajolet has him covered. Won't go broke if he loses this pot, but will certainly be on the substantial short stack at this table if the Ace Queen doesn't hold up. The very notorious Ace Queen here on the World Poker Tour. Can it rear its ugly head once again and backfire? We will see five cards to come. Chris Smith up from his seat. And right now, you know, Eric's saying to himself, I've been unlucky in these situations all night long here. Surely my hand's got to hold up one Ace time. In the window. Oh. Oh. You see Eric wince once again. His opponent now has a flush draw. I got 14 ounces twice. He's got to be saying, how wait, wait, can wait. this be happening? Just chop the pot, 50-50, we'll start over. The guy's got a flush draw on me. Chris breaking into a smile. A He's over, offering yeah. to chop the pot. This is a cash game. We'd run it three times. No one would get hurt. This is no cash game, though. You can't do that. I can make a straight In a live tournament, Chris, know, like as you know. Here we go with the turn card. Will he catch his flush here? No. No, I was going to put that there. Well, the three of diamonds comes off. That gives Chris a straight draw as well as a flush draw. So if it comes a king, a six, a five, or a heart, Chris Smith is going to double up and stay alive in this tournament. Otherwise, it will be over. We'll be down to three. I just Here board. comes the river. But Jack comes off. Eric says, finally, I win a pot. So Chris Smith is going to go out in fourth place. The cash game player out of Las Vegas. A gallant effort. Going to pick up $70,000. Timing a little bit off right there. We are down to three players. We're coming back for more action in just a moment. My cousins were watching the WPT way back when. On the World Poker Tour. I was like interested. And then I played online. I made an account instantly and that's how I learned. But the title is a lot. Just winning like a WPT event could call you like a WPT champion. So that's awesome. <laughs> you look great. You look great. You look great. How do I look? Ooh, party Bad poker. poker face. Doesn't matter when you play online at PartyPoker.com. It's fun, it's easy, it's the world's largest poker room. That's some flowers. That's some flowers. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, the Turks and Caicos Poker Classic. From beautiful Turks and Caicos in the Caribbean continues. We are down to three players. And right now, Alan Sass is out in front with 1.2 million. Eric Cajolet with about 1 million. Reiney with about half a million. 
Back down to the table. It's going to be on Eric Casule from Montreal. 45. He's got an 8 6 of spades, and he has raised to 45,000. Riney quickly folding his hand, but Alan Sass with a jack 10. He has made the call. Well, I'll tell you, these two love to spar with each other. We've seen it all night long. Looks like just a matter of time before one of them gets knocked down. Well, the flop comes up a 10 8 4. Allen hitting top pair of 10s. Allen's checked it. Eric Casule has second pair. He's got two eights. And he's reaching for chips. Looks like he's going to bet 65,000. Now, what do you do if you're Allen if you flop top pair here? It's so scary just to call here because over cards could come out there, a heart could come out there, potential straight card. Then what do you do with two tens? Oh, well, life is scary. What are you going to do? This well, is just a poker game. I'll tell you what Allen's going to do. He's just calling. Just call. Let the card roll off. It's a king of spades. Well, there comes one of the over cards out there, the king of spades. Action again on Allen. He checks. Yeah, we're casually trying to make sense of all of this. Now, well, Eric also checks. Nice slowdown by him. River card coming up. Well, seven of spade comes off on the river. Now, once Eric checked on the turn, Allen has got to feel like his two tens were the best hand, at least on 4th Street. It looks like he wants to get in the old value bet. Well, a value bet is a bet you make that when you think you have the best hand. Doesn't have to be a pot-sized bet. That's exactly what he's done. He's bet 125,000 in the pot that's got about 225 Nine. in it. 125. Hopes it that five? your opponent calls it. Nowhere near the best possible hand, but it's a hand you feel like is the best hand. Alan Sass feels like his two tens is the best hand right here, and indeed they are. And Eric is squirming in his seat. When you're squirming in your seat and you're moving around, that, that is a hand that's usually going to be played. That's a hand that you very rarely see monked. Well, then, his opponent called him on the flop. That's a potential straight card. I mean, would he bet second pair in this spot or bottom pair in this spot? Very unlikely. If you're sitting in Eric's seat, really, you have to put your opponent on a busted flush draw if you're going to call here with two eights. Well, Eric's curiosity has got the best of him. He's made the call Check here nine. with the two Check eights. Check ten. Check ten. Well, another good value bet by Alan Sass. He bet two tens on the river. He's going to take down the pot because of it. Yes, and Eric's got to make a note to himself. Watch out for Alan Sass. He's got the better of you there. Nice bet. Beware. So Alan Sass, the 24-year-old pro out of Las Vegas, increases his chip lead. He's up to over 1.4 million. Eric Cajolet with a little over 800,000. And Riney Campbell, the amateur, Sitting on a half million. Action on the guy from Montreal, former bartender Eric Cajoulet. This time he's got a jack, three of diamonds, and he's going to raise with it. Well, he's in position on the button. He makes it 45000 to go. You know, invariably, he seems to raise it after he loses every pot. Into the hometown favorite, Riney Campbell, the rhino. He's got an ace, five of diamonds. Well, he wants to see a flop. He's going to make the call here. And behind him, Alan Sass with a queen, ten. Well, that's a lot of money out there right now. Over 110000 in the pot. Going to cost him 29000 to make this call. He can't be raised from this spot. He's the chip leader here, so why not go ahead and gamble with the Queen-10? He's doing it. We're going to have a family pot here. Three-way action in a raised pot. Flop comes King, Queen, four with two diamonds. Riney has the nut flush draw, and he checks it. Alan Sass with the legitimate pair of Queens. Allen also checks. And now Eric with the button who raised before the flop. Going to put in the continuation bet. Yes, he is. $100,000 with his flush draw. Well, I don't blame him for betting here, Vince. He raised before the flop. Everybody's checked on the flop. But a quick call by Riney Campbell. Well, Riney with the nut flush draw makes the call. So Allen now lays down second pair. Might have played that against one guy, but you don't want to play it against two. So both guys with a flush draw going at it here. No diamond there on Riney. He checks with an eight of hearts. Well, it's over to Eric Cajolet. Now he could Cajolet take a free card here on the river if he wanted to. Try to hit his flush. And no he, further investment. Come on, stick around. If he hits it, it would spell doom for him. Mullen. But he's wow. not going to do that. He's going all in with it. Well, he is going to put the pressure on the local right here. 
I should have moved on in on that flop. Well, you're right about that, Rhino. You should have. Now, Rhino's got the best hand and the best draw, but little does he know it. Eric raised before the flop. He bet on the flop, and he's moved all in on the turn. Do you want to gamble here on a draw with just one card to go? Well, this will be the call of the night. He might be backdooring into a huge win here. Nice play. Uh-oh. You, oh. you can put those words in a frame and put them on the wall, Ronnie, because indeed... I have to shove on the top. It was a nice play by Eric Casually to move in there to take down that pot. It would have, it would have come. Ronnie's saying it would have come. i got to take a look at the wonder camp. And no, Riney, you're going to disappoint yourself twice. First, that it didn't come, and second, that you still had the winning hand. It just didn't work out for you that time. Most players would have check-raised all in on the flop in that situation. They're happy to win the pot with the drawing hand. He lost a pot that perhaps he would have won. I need the, you know, well, you need Riney Campbell hand. getting outplayed on the turn. And right now, the two pros the distancing themselves from the amateur. Action's going to be on the Rhino. Riney Campbell, the businessman from Turks Caicos. This time he picks up a pretty strong ace, 10 of diamonds. Well, blinds have gone up to 10 and 20,000. And Rhino's going to raise it here up to 85,000. This to Sassafras is out. And now Eric Cajolet with a king jack of hearts. All in. And he says all in. Call. Well, Riney quickly calls him. He's out in front with the ace, 10 of diamonds. Eric Cajolet with the King Jack of Hearts. And Eric just not thinking Riney was that strong. Thought he could just steal this pot right now, but not to be. Yeah, I got this one. Oh. I think I'm going to have this one. I can't beat you with the best answer. So I'm going to try this one. Hometown crowd on their feet, enjoying the moment. My favorite name, Kojak. Yeah, no, Kojak has to beat you. Kojak has Riney to beat Campbell is called the Island Kojak here. He's a former cop. Right now, he's up against Kojak. He's got to All beat right, it to stay go. alive. Nothing. Well, yes. the flop comes 8-7-5 so with two diamonds. A great flop so for Riney because that eliminates two of the outs that Eric has in his hand. He cannot win the pot now with the king of diamonds or the jack of diamonds. He must catch a black king or a black jack to take the lead here. Come on, six diamonds. Five of hearts comes off. So we are down to one card, the river card. Eric Cajolet needs to catch a black king or a black jack. Otherwise, once again, Riney Campbell will double oh, up at this final table after being oh, all in. Baby. Can the hometown one king time. do it once again? Was Steve Buckner say one time, one time, Got to sweat time. out the river card. One Here time. we go. One time, one time. Oh, yes. it's a black face card, but not a king or a jack. So Riney has done it once again, and the crowd goes wild as their local favorite wins yet another all-in pot. Ace High is going to stand up for the Rhino. Oh, nice pair of clubs. Vince, you just can't kill off this local guy, I'm telling you. Well, Riney, unbelievable. A hometown favorite doing it here. Who says you can't have your cakes and eat it too at Turks and Caicos? Stay tuned, we're coming back with more action in just a moment. Yeah, baby! Have you got what it takes to be a WPT champion? Find out at WPT on GSN.com. Welcome back to the Turks and Caicos Poker Classic. Now, right now, our chip leader is the youngest player at the table. Professional player Alan Sass, Eric Casule from Canada. Has a little over 800,000. And the local, the amateur, Riney Campbell, is now becoming a force here, Vance. He's got nearly 750,000 in chips. A dream come true for him tonight. But action's on Eric. And with the Jack-10, just going to call limping in. Well, he limps in on the button. But just as quick, Riney Campbell is going to raise it out of the small blind with the king-queen of clubs. He makes it 65,000 to go. Next to act is Allen. He folds an ace-8. Ironically, Allen land down the best hand. Back on Eric. He's going to call the remainder with his Jack-10. So we are going to see a flop. We're playing poker now. Flop comes ace, 10-9, all spades. Neither player has a spade in their hand. Action's on Riney. He has checked it. Now Eric's caught a piece of it. No, no, pair of 10s, but no, he's checking behind him. Deuce of clubs comes on the turn. 100. Oh, and look who's getting bold, the Rhino. He's going to stick $100,000 worth of chips out there with absolutely nothing. 
Well, he's got the gut shot straight draw, as we say, but with all those spades out there and everything, he gets Eric to lay down two tens by betting 100000 on the turn. So chalk one up to the local amateur <laughs> for making a bold bet right there to take down that pot. Oh, this guy is bigger than life, I tell you. He was down to extremely short stack a moment ago, but how the tide has turned here in Turks and Caicos. Could this be his night? Yeah, baby! Well, Vince, this is the guy that actually brought the World Poker Tour to the islands. He wanted it to come here because he loves poker. He's responsible for the World Poker Tour being here. Here he is at the final table with a shot to win this thing. Very Incredible. Exciting. It is exciting. Going back to this hand, Eric quickly folding. Ryanie with a queen deuce of hearts. Not going to raise, just calling. And limps in out of the small blind. Allen with a 6-5 offsuit. Says, give us a flop. It's come 6-4-3 with two hearts. Riney has flopped a flush draw and a gut shot straight draw, and he's going to bet 45000 Yeah, but looking back at his cards, flashing them now, kind of a tell in itself. Well, Allen has top pair and an open-end straight draw. We could have a huge pot here. We had raised Allen's here with a four. And Allen not going to get aggressive with it. He just calls it. Taking the conservative route. Here comes the turn card. Well, the five of hearts wow. comes off. Riney now has a flush, but Allen has the top two pair. Riney going to check this. He's going to play it slow. But Allen's not going to fall in the trap. Checks behind him. Oh, what a nice check by Allen on the turn there. Now the board pairs fours on the river. Chips are falling off the stack of Riney. He's so excited. Oh, you're right, man. <laughs> Fumbling a little bit with his chips here. But obviously he is going to make a bet. 155000 Sticks it out there. Now, Allen, so wise not to bet on the turn, kind of sensed something. But now he's reconsidering this. Got something, Ronnie? This would be the nice lay down. Be the lay down of the afternoon if he could make this. Well, he's got the top two pair, but there's so many hands that can beat that with this board out there. Would Ronnie really bet out into an open and straight draw and a possible flush or even a possibility of three fours if he couldn't beat sixes and fives? Riney acting very nonchalant there, like he's counting his chips, like he doesn't care whether this man calls him. I call. But he gets the call flush. he wants. Riney is going to win this pot with a flush. Crowd going nuts there for their man. He's been on the cameras numerous times this evening. And Mike, you got to say, right now it is Rhino time. He is taking over. we got a new chip leader. Stay with us. Three players remain. We're coming back for more. Whoever is lucky enough to get heads up and answer me, it's going to be over in 10 ends. Welcome back to the Turks and Caicos Poker Classic. We are down to three-handed poker, and we have a major upset in the making. Riney Campbell, the hometown favorite, he has got a shot at this title. He's become our new chip leader. And Bench, you know, every pot he wins, his confidence is growing that he can take these guys. He's out front right now, but everybody's got a lot of chips. Certainly anybody's game from here. Out of the money pit, Riney with a queen ten of spades. He's going to raise it up. Makes it 55000 to go. So you're going to like me having the chip lead. We're going to have action. But behind him, Mike, Alan Sass with a big ace queen. Just going to call it. Well, many players would have come over the top right there with the ace queen. Figuring it's the best hand against the other blind. But Alan opting to take the conservative route. Just calls. And the flop comes six, deuce, deuce with two spades. Riney has flopped a flush draw. And he's going to make the continuation bet with the four flush. It looks like 55000 again. Certainly not a big bet into a pot that's got well over 110000 in it. Oh, and Allen is on to it. He's saying, look, I don't think you hit much there. Well, Allen's making the call because he does believe he's got the best hand right now with ace-queen. Indeed, he does. No more, oh, though. Oh, boy. The four spade comes <laughs> off for the second consecutive pot. Riney has made a flush on the turn. With no hesitation, betting 200 grand. Now, I like that bet, and I like how he does it so quickly. Usually, when you catch a flush, you're going to slow down, you're going to hesitate, you're going to check raise it, perhaps. You're going to play it slow. This man does the reverse, bets it, and he bets it very quickly. Sometimes that's suspicious that the man doesn't have a hand. Well, you're right. Looks like he might be bluffing here. Allen's problem is that he has the ace of spade here, meaning he's got the ace high flush draw himself. He saw how quickly Ronnie bet that pot. He's going to call oh, him here, yeah. Vance. So a big pot developing now, over 600,000 in it. 
we've got one more card to go. Can Allen pull off the last spade? Nope. Well, ten of hearts comes off. Action's on Riney. He has a flush. And he is reaching for more chips. And this time, 300,000 is the bet. To add to the confusion. Right now, Allen's saying to himself, wait a second. This guy really was strong. Is he going to push, push, push like that? Maybe I can be a hero today. Maybe my ace high is in front. Well, that's exactly right, Vince. That's all I can be thinking about. He's really saying to himself, could this guy have possibly made another flush like he did in the last hand against me? How many times can you make a flush in one game? Ronnie trying to act like he's got a migraine headache here. Inside, Ronnie's saying, please call, please call, please call me. It'd be a catastrophe for Alan Sass, who's played so well all evening long. He's going to oh. make the call and blow another 300000 yes. in this pot. Oh boy, he is going to donate it. And with this hand, Riney Campbell has taken a massive chip lead in this three-handed battle. He shoots his arms up. The crowd goes wild. Alan Sass mucks his hand in record time. Has to be a little embarrassed by that call. And right now, the crowd going nuts for their man, Riney Campbell. You got to say, this guy is really catching the cards. Back to back hands, he's made queen eye flushes. Well, Mike, I got to tell you, I got a lot of respect for Alan Sass. You know, Mr. Bad Sass, he's a hell of a player, but right now you got to say that he is self destructing a little bit here. Well, no doubt about it. Alan had the chip lead just a short while ago where Ronnie was on the short stack. Now it's completely flip flopped around. Ronnie with the big chip lead. Like a big snowball rolling down the hill, just getting bigger and bigger and could become unstoppable. And here goes the Rhino once again. This time with a mediocre 10-7 has raised and all in by Alan Sass with a pair of fours, 44. And Riney quickly calls him without hesitation with a 10-7 offsuit. It's the best thing you can hope for. And Alan Sass has got to be a little yeah. shocked by that. How could the guy it's beat me in the pot with that. a 10-7 offsuit? You know, sometime I might be able to beat it, a 10 high. Nice showdown so far. Ahead, behind. Indeed, he's got him beat right now. He's got the two fours. But we have the race situation, the two over Fours cards versus cards the under pair. Alan Sass must win this pot to stay alive in this tournament. If Ronnie wins this pot, he will extend his chip lead. We'll be down to heads up play. And Alan Sass will be our third place finisher. Here we go with the first three out of five. None of them is good. Ace, queen, jack. Ace. So far so jack. good for the pair of fours. She's going to pair the board just to make it like again. To make it scary. Breaks into uh, a grin. Pair the boys a split. Saying, well, what's going to happen now? Is he going to come a king, a ten, or a seven? A king would give Ronnie a straight. And that's oh. indeed what happened. Oh, no. Unbelievable. Ronnie has made the ace high straight. A third consecutive pat hand has been made by Ronnie Campbell over Alan Sass. Alan's not out yet. If a ten comes off, it would be a split pot. Alan cannot win the pot. He's got to catch a 10 to get the split pot. Complete devastation there for Alan Sass. River card for a split possibly. No, not to be. And just like that, Alan Sass, Sasquatch by the Rhino. He is out in third place. He is devastated in shock. That's by everyone. Well, Vince, you almost have the sense that destiny is on the side of the local guy. When you make back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back pat hands in a three-handed tournament, that's got to be an omen, doesn't it? And just like that, Mike, we are down to two players' heads up action. Well, as is the custom on the World Poker Tour, when we get down to heads up play, we have our money presentation. Yes, we do, and there have been many different ways of delivering the cash on the World Poker Tour, but today we are delivering it by speedboat here at Turks and Caicos. And Vince, on Turks and Caicos, there's no lack of beautiful women and plenty of cash. Open up a treasure chest. Look at the cash there. There you see the WPT customized chip set, the customized bracelet that our champion's going to get. Will the local do it? Can he knock down the pro from Montreal? We shall see. Lots of excitement here at Turks and Caicos. Who's going to become the half millionaire here this afternoon? Stay with us. We're coming back with a fight in just a moment. Get inside the game with stats, videos, and profiles on all your favorite WPT players at WPT on GSN.com. 
Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. The sun is setting at Turks and Caicos for the Turks and Caicos Poker Classic. We are about to start heads up battle, and right now it is the Rhino, the amateur player, the former cop, Riney Campbell. He's the chip leader with over $2 million. He's up against a Canadian poker pro, 25 year old Eric Cajolet. He is going to be a tough hombre to get by. It's on Eric. He has picked up a huge hand, pair of kings. 55. And he's quickly going to raise it. And he makes it 55,000 to go. But just as quick, Riney Campbell beats him in the pot almost with the Jack Seven Hearts. Here comes the flop. With an ace, nine, seven, a couple spades. Riney has a piece of that pair of sevens, but he checks it. Eric Cangelay has two kings. He's going to make a bet here. Looks like about 65,000. This is just hoping that all in. Riney didn't have an ace, but Riney says all in with just the sevens. Wow. Riney Campbell has check raised Eric for all his chips here, and now Eric is faced with a very tough decision. Oh, it certainly is. He's saying to yourself, oh no, how did that happen? Ace has to pop up when I have kings. Very disappointing. And I'll tell you something. This is just a very, very strong move by the former cop, Riney Campbell. It looks like he has an ace. I think he got to lay this hand down. Well, yes, that's what big time poker is all about. Putting yourself in pressure situations and making the right decision. Will Eric make the right decision here to go with this hand or to muck it? I'm going to fold the best time. Well, he says he making a bad lay down. He is correct. Eric goes away and Riney Campbell, just like that, is going to make the steal. Well, Vince, part of that has to do with the fact, like you mentioned, it seems like invariably when you have a pair of kings and an ace comes up and a guy check raises you, you're just sick automatically that the ace came up. So you just fold just because you think the guy might have an ace. And you don't want to go bust with an all-in when an ace pops up. Very disappointing right there for Eric. So Riney not looking to chop things out here, Vince. Told us on the break he was looking to end this thing in about five hands. He's trying to play big pots in the cushion. And Vince, this island is going crazy right now. They see their local poker hero about to win a WPT event, perhaps. All right, action's on him this time with the button. And he's got a junkie 10-5. Won't play that. He folds. To the disappointment of Eric, who had a Not premium today. hand. Ace Jack gets no action. Not today. Eric Cajolet has held two premium hands in a heads-up situation. Two kings, a pot he lost and got outplayed by Ronnie. And then he had Ace Jack and got no action on it. Eric has been put through the ringer here this afternoon. At Turks and Caicos, the sun has finally gone down. Well, can the amateur cross the finish line with the trophy and keep the cash right here in Turks and Caicos? It's going to be on Eric from Montreal. He's got an Ace 8 this time. Just limps in and calls on the button with the Ace high. Ryan, behind all him with Jack 10 of clubs. Goes all in and a quick call by Eric. Well, Eric's not going to get pushed around anymore. And right now, he has the best hand. This could be my five minutes winning. He has an ace high. Well, Eric Slow played it, limped in, trapped him, gets all the money in, and he's well out in front. But the Jack-10 suited is Riney's favorite hand. Oh, come on, ace in the window. And he's got a chance to end this thing right now if his favorite hand holds up. He's going to put like a flush draw, a straight draw for you. All day long, it's going to be the same thing. Eric Cajolet, he has taken the blows this evening. He's about a three to two favorite to win this pot. And I can assure you, he's not going to be comfortable until all five cards are out there and his hand <laughs> is the best hand. After what's happened to him on the river a couple times here at this final table tonight. Can this Canadian pro have the ace high stand up here? Let's see. Here we go with the flop. Yes. Riney oh. says yes. The first card he saw was a jack, which gave him two jacks, but an ace peeled off right underneath that. Eric out in front right now with the two aces. Ace. Hey, it's not going to be quite as smooth as Riney expected. No, no, no. Ace. For Riney to win this pot, he's going to have to catch a jack or a 10 or two running cards to make an ace high straight. Well, he has sucked out on Eric before tonight in a couple big ways. Here we Here go with the turn. Not there. Come on. Come on. So one card to come. Let's go. Will this it be a 10. jack or a 10? Will this event be over? This is a 10. No, the four hearts comes off of there. Eric says, finally, the best hand Ooh. stands up. Where's that ace come from? Let me have a pot and get right back in this yeah. thing. Break one. And a pretty healthy pot at that, nearly 900,000. And the Rhino graciously giving some chips back to Eric Cajoulet. Nice, uh, Stay tuned. Turks and Caicos Poker Classic will continue in just a moment. Hello, Mr. Cunningham.
Alan, it's a big pot out there, buddy. I'm all in. Don't be scared. <laughs> I call. Only a donkey would make that call. We play at fulltiltpoker.com. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. The Turks and Caicos Poker Classic continues. Heads up action. We have a major upset in the making. It is the local Riney Campbell, the former cop of the island. He's the chip leader with close to $2 million. Yep, it's a 34-year-old amateur versus a 25-year-old professional player, Eric Casuley, out of Canada. Back to the table, Rhino this time with Jack Seven of Diamonds. Going to make a raise here. Yeah, makes it 45000 to go. And Eric with a 5-4. Going to stick around. Yeah, it cost him 25000 more to make the call. Let's see if we can get lucky and hit a flop here. The flop comes Jack, three deuce. He's flopped an open in straight draw. Eric has, he checks. Rhino has flopped two jacks, and he's betting. Rhino has bet 60,000. Eric open-ended here. I raise. Well, he says raise. Rhino waiting to see how much he raises it. Rhino has that look of all in. He has that look of going over the top all in. 90 more. He's going to raise it 90,000 more. I'm try to push the rhino oh. around, but not to be. The rhino says all in. Oh, you can't push the rhino around, Ben. <laughs> and right now, Eric's saying to himself, why did I raise here? Why didn't I just call where I could take a card off? To say nothing to save that extra 90000 In time for dinner. Looks like he's contemplating gambling this open-end straight draw. Just out of spite. Aggravated spite. Come on, show. There's no poker proverb. Don't go out of a tournament by calling your money off with a drawing hand. And Eric doesn't violate that proverb. He lays his hand down. Yeah. And the Rhino continues to steamroll the young professional player. Just another strong move. Saying, I think I'm in front. I'm going to make you pay if you want to gamble. Nicely done. And I got to say, the Rhino actually plays better shorthanded poker because he's so aggressive than he does in a full game. You make a good point there. And right now he is whips on this young <laughs> professional player, Eric Cajolet. And Mike, the antes and blinds are going up once again. $3,000 antes. The blinds are going to be twelve and 24000 Play goes to Eric. This time looking down at a queen 10 offsuit. 45 more. He figures to be a favorite over two random cards. So he's going to raise it here. Makes it 69000 to go. Right behind him, the Call. Rhino picking up the same hand. Queen 10 of hearts, though. Well, Rhino has a suited hand, but the same two cards. He's going to make the call with it. Why not? He's seemingly winning every pot right now. There comes the flop. It's come ace, five, four with two hearts. Rhino has flopped a Check. first draw. He checks. Yeah, neither player pairing. Rhino checking here. 75. Oh, yeah. All in. Eric is going to bet 75, and just like that, all in by the Rhino. And Eric Cajolet has got to be saying to himself, Wow, how can this guy hit every single hand? He's beat me every pot so far. I just feel hot. Well, Vince, I'll tell you one thing. You're not going to outplay Ronnie on the turn in the river because we're never going to get that far. Ronnie is just looking to play a big pot for all the dough. He is a fearless warrior here. He's not afraid to gamble. The Rhino running rampant here at Turks Caicos. He extends his lead to about $2.3 million to the delight of his fans and friends here on the island. So the local amateur, Riney Campbell, inches closer to that finish line. Relentless pounding by the Rhino. Well, He's got the button. Everything going right for him. Oh. He has a hand when he needs one. He makes moves when he needs to. Here he limps in with two tens. Just calls. Trying to set a trap here. Now Eric behind him with queen nine. Off suit. Is he going to bite? Yes, he's going to make a raise here. He makes it 100,000. I'm all in. Riney has gone all in with two tens. Eric may be pot committed here. He's only got about 300,000 left. Yes, he does make the call. The yeah. chips are going in on this very hand. So Riney out in front with the two tens. If he wins this pot, it will be dream come true for Rhino. He will bring a World Poker Tour title to Turks and Caicos right here on his home soil. That's okay. Well, I tell you, Eric has been pushed around so I much. I think you're going to get a you're going to get a queen of clubs. Eventually, he just he can't take it anymore. He makes his call. So, Eric. 
So far, he's been unlucky when his opponents have been all in in situations at this final table. Perhaps the tide will turn, and he'll get lucky for a change. There will be the 10 to take down the title at the Turks and Caicos. Crowd on its feet. There you go. Queen. Oh, a queen comes right on the flop, as does a nine. Eric has flopped two pair, miraculously outdrawing the rhino. No, you wouldn't. He's going to turn and check. Twice he had top two pair when his opponents were all in. They outdrew him on the river. Let's see if Ronnie will outdraw him again. They'll win. This time, it would be a horrendous beat as his opponent's got to catch a 10 or two running cards to make a straight. <sighs> well, there's one of the straight cards. The king comes off. That brings a sly grin out of Eric Casualet right there. He knows his opponent can catch a jack now and make a straight as well as a 10. If Riney does so, he'll be our champion. If not, Eric will once again double up. Going to the river here. Yes! He done it! A 10 comes off! Smith, he has done it! For the off-team time at this final table, Riney has got the river card to win this tournament. I cannot believe what we saw. And once again, it's heartbreak for Eric Cajolet on the river. We have a champion, amateur player, the king of the turkeys and Caicos, Randy Jambo. Dreams come true on the World Poker Tour. to stay alive. Did you think destiny was on your side here today? All day long. All day long. Mike, this whole poker tournament today was not about me. I've asked the people of the Turks and Caicos to believe in something that I want to do, and that is to bring poker to the Turks and Caicos. The best way to do it is to win it, and that's what this was all about. Well, you certainly did that. How about it for our champion, Riley Campbell? For Vince Van Patten, Layla Cayley, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching. And until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters.